Hi, welcome to Biomedical Engineers TV. In this video, we will be looking at pneumatic capsule pipelines transportation used for blood samples and medication transport across a hospital. Let's look into the history of pneumatic tube systems. The Scottish engineer William Murdoch was the inventor of pneumatic tube transports for postage. Later, he developed systems for the company London Pneumatic Dispatch. The Danish engineer George Methurst is mentioned as inventor as well, because it is said that he began to use differences in pressure for transport since 1810. The first patent was registered by Josiah Latimer Clark in 1854 for the transport of mailings and parcels via pneumatic tubes. He also installed the above-mentioned first urban pneumatic post in London. Especially in hospitals, pneumatic tube systems still play an essential role. Even though state-of-the-art technology is used in many medical areas, the well-tried mode of operation of pneumatic tube systems still handle a large part of the critical intralogics transport routes in hospitals. The quality of transport of goods is extremely important as misdelivered goods or improper handling during pneumatic transport negatively impact logistical operations, staff efficiency, and patient care. Now, let's understand how pneumatic tube systems work. The concept of a pneumatic tube system has not changed since its development many years ago. Each system is powered by air. One or more air compressors and a network of different delivery tubes form the basis of every system. For carriers that need to be transported several floors upwards, compressed air is required. To transport pneumatic tube carriers to a lower floor, it is sucked in by the help of air. Horizontal transport works with both compressed air and by suction depending on the system. The pneumatic tube software is used to transmit information about the level where individual pneumatic tube stations are located as well as where to transport the individual carriers. Most installations that operate with an air compressor use an air diverter. These are usually located above the compressor and regulate whether the carrier in a pneumatic tube system is conveyed by compressed air or by suction. The air switches are thus responsible for the air compressor to change from pressure to suction and vice versa. Several switches in the individual transport pipes ensure that the correct station is addressed. As soon as a carrier is routed from another branch of the tube, the information is transmitted via the pneumatic tube software. Frequency converters on the blower are used to prevent containers from being transported too fast. They slow down the journeys with the pneumatic tube network, preventing the carrier and its contents from being damaged. Large pneumatic tube systems that cover several buildings and floors usually require several transport lines and blowers. The transport lines operate similarly to the routes of a subway network. Individual carriers often have to change lines to reach their destination. By means of transfer units, a possibility to leave one line in order to continue on another is created. This compact crossing allows an automatic exchange of containers between several lines. Special particle filters are used to clean the air inside a pneumatic tube system. Microscopic particles such as dust or pollen are removed from transport tubes. Let's look into the major components of pneumatic tube systems. The major components are pneumatic tube carriers, pneumatic tube stations, diverters for pneumatic tubes, and blowers for pneumatic tubes. First, let's know about pneumatic tube carriers. The term carrier refers to the cylindrical containers used to carry goods from point A to point B. Coming in a diverse range of sizes, carriers can fit a wide selection of packages and objects. These containers can be either plastic or metal, dependent on user preference and needs. Plastic is often the preferable choice, being clean and durable, whilst also exhibiting static-reducing qualities. Leak-proof and lockable carriers fitted with RFID chips are ideal options for hospitals, offering safe and secure transport for sensitive content. Carriers are often fitted with plastic bumpers and fabric bands to help protect the capsule's content during its journey. The second component are pneumatic tube stations. Pneumatic tube stations refer to the locations where carriers are sent or received. The large range of pneumatic tube stations available allow users to select the most appropriate station based on their needs. Stations come in a large range of sizes and designs. Standard design includes a loading port and an interface panel. With users keen to improve efficiency, the latest designs have features such as auto unloading. Accessories can also be added to ensure safe and secure transport including receiving baskets, carrier storage, and arrival indicators. The third component is diverters for pneumatic tubes. Diverters are extremely important to pneumatic tube systems, allowing packages to turn corners and or change directions within the tube network. 
Today, users often require complex systems, which incorporate a large number of send and receive stations and thus paths. Located at zone connections, a diverter regulates airflow to ensure that carriers are transported along the correct and most direct path. Once installed, diverters can be operated remotely. And the fourth component is blowers for pneumatic tubes. The blower is the driving force behind pneumatic tube systems, providing the system with its air supply. Blower is used to describe the fans that create the vacuum and air pressure within the transport tubes, causing the carriers to move. These fans create a difference in air density behind and in front of the canister. This difference in air pressure enables the carrier to be pushed or pulled along the tube. These fans are responsible for propelling containers through the system at speeds of 25 feet per second. Let's think about the application of pneumatic tube systems. Pneumatic tube systems are basic inventory in hospitals with more than 200 beds because they're the best solution when long distances need to be covered and when seconds count, for example, during surgery, when a blood product or a sample result is needed urgently, whether blood, tissue, urine samples, or medication. When speed is vital, the hospital tube system will transport items fast, safe, and shock-free. Patient registration in the ER, laboratory, surgery, blood bank, or care wards, nurses' rooms, and the hospital's pharmacy. The different areas in a hospital can all be connected to the pneumatic tube system with our choice of space-saving stations in modern designs. This was the simplified video on pneumatic tube systems used in the hospital. If you like the information, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe down below. I'll see you guys in the next video.